You want to know a very weird thing that I've been getting lately? I've been getting asked, Matt, what do I do with my savings? What do I do with my investments? What do I do with this COVID check? What do I do with this unemployment check, my tax refund check? What do I do with the money I withdrew from my 401k plan? What? So in this video, I'm gonna clear it up. What I would do with $5,000 in this time, in this economy, during this pandemic, and hopefully post-pandemic, in this episode of Seven Figure Squad, coming to you right now. Let me show what I'm talking about. Check this out. Bad. Five thousand dollars cash given you today, right? What would you do with that five thousand dollars, and how would you invest that five thousand dollars to double your profit? To double your profit, okay. Other messages. Hey, this business you created, right? Ask me about my business, your business now. Business for five hundred bucks, but. Be more specific, like what kind of business did you create? Did you need tools for it? Did you need a computer? Did you need accessories? Did you need to travel? Like all these stuff too, expenses. See, I'm trying to, I'm trying to use some money to get more money in the long run. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to invest money in the stock exchange because it's too much of a risk. So I'm trying to figure out a way that I can invest some money and make more money, you know? What is the best thing you think of if i were to give you five grand cash and put it in your hand what would you do with that money right now to double your money okay okay and it continues i was thinking about buying merchandise on amazon or buying merchandise bulk and selling it online and see if i make money but i'm kind of trying to you know study what's popular what sells and what doesn't sell online finding out what's popular okay this is how you know people need to improve their financial literacy and awareness and financial education. Let me continue. How did you get introduced to the insurance industry? You went to school for it? Many of you got the same question. So people wondered, do I, do I buy stocks? Okay, do I buy stocks? Do I buy silver? Do I buy gold? What do I do? Let's take a look here. So how do I invest $5,000 and in that case, double my money. And I'll just cut to the chase. So let's check this out. I'll cut right to the chase here. For 5,000 bucks, especially in this time right now, especially in this time where people are going in between jobs or in between potentially careers or businesses, I tuck that money away in an emergency account. And I'd invest in one thing. Your best investment is what? Yourself. So that's what I did. Come here, come check this out. This, this is me. This is me as a single father. Come here. This is me as a single father, right? This is my two boys. And I'm about to go on a deployment. I don't know why my aunt took this picture, but my family's about to get ripped. I was going through a divorce. I'm about to go to a deployment. I'm in a very uncomfortable decision. I don't know why my aunt took this picture, okay? And here, here, here's another picture. I put this up on my board to always remind me, this is not my checking account. This is not my ATM receipt. At a time where I could barely take money out of the ATM, I went to the ATM to take out 20 bucks. And this ATM receipt was just sticking out, of the, sticking out the machine. So I grabbed the receipt, and the person in front of me, who I don't know who that was, they left the receipt, and they got $500 out of their bank account. Make matters worse, they also left $114,000 in their account, and I'm seeing this, and I'm seeing this at a point in my life, I'm going through my own financial crisis. I'm like, God, what are you trying to tell me right now? You put me through this crisis, put me through this ATM, what are you trying to tell me? So... For many of you, especially during this crisis, especially during this pandemic, I'm getting a lot of questions like this. What do I do with $1,000? What do I do with $5,000? How do I double my money? How, how do I, I don't know, roll the dice in a stock market or roll the dice online or roll the dice in a business where I can double my money here in the next 30, 60, 90 days? I'm telling you right now, the best investment for you is to tuck your money away so you can have some cushion to put your money away to pay some bills, but your biggest investment right now would be you. I'm saying this, I'm not a financial advisor, I'm not an investment advisor. I'm just telling you what happened to me and how I earned over $5 million in a five and a half year period. Here's one thing I realized, the best investment, the best insurance to buy is income insurance. What am I talking about? It's not something you can buy a life insurance company. It's you buying insurance on information and education to take you, financially speaking, to the next level. Come over here, let's, let's take a look at this. And I realized that many different ways to make money in our country. Okay, so, so many, of you, many of you read that book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and you may have seen the cash flow quadrant. If you know what the cash flow quadrant is, let me, let me review it with you. 
Robert Kiyosaki writes in his book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, there's four major ways to make money in a country. You make money as an employee, you make money as a self-employed person. So, so employee, you're filling out a W-2, right? Here, you're a 1099, you're a 100% commission salesperson, you're a doctor, you're an attorney, you're a dentist, you're an athlete, self-employed, or, or you're an actor, you're an artist. We have to sell services or sell a product to make money. Here, you trade, you trade time for money, nine to five, clock in, clock out, you get your cash. 90% of people in America are right here, boom. And that's why 90% of people in America are hurting. Very rarely do you get people over here to come to the right side of the quadrant because, because that's b about being a business owner. That's about being an entrepreneur. And, and he, de he describes a small business of 500 plus or more employees, brand ambassadors, independent contractors, because you got a system and a process that runs your business without your direct involvement all the time in everything. You still make money. See, that's a business. Okay, sometimes, uh, 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 I remember when I got involved in my own financial insurance practice, I put CEO on my business card, thinking that I'm a business owner. Listen, man, I'm a, I'm a glorified salesperson. I'm not a CEO. You know why? I'm a glorified salesperson because I don't have a, sa a system or a process helping me make, make, helping me make money. And last but not least is an investor. You've seen Shark Tank. So let, let's go through it real quick. Four major ways to make money. If I had $5,000... What I do with it, number one, I understand the rules of how to make money. This is part of the money game. How do I make money where I am in control of my finances, okay? So first way to make money is be active. Punch in, punch out, you got a nine to five, you got a job, W-2. That's called active income. You have to actively work for it. You're earning it, okay? And the IRS considers this type of income, not only is it limited, in terms of what you can make, but the, the IRS considers this some of the most highly income taxable income that you can make. It's called earned income, okay? And it's also not only highest taxable, but it's also limited because there's only so many nine to five, 40, 50, 60 hour overtime weeks that you can work. There's only so many homes. There's only so much legal services. There's only so many teeth you got to clean, so many patients you got to see, so many clients to train. There's only so many insurance policies you can sell in order for you to make money. That's called limited income. Why? Because you got to sleep, you got to eat, you got a family, you got a life. So the second part, and this is what a lot of people love to discover more of, which is called passive income. So when I started learning rule of money, I was like, what's passive income? That's money that you don't have to be there to earn. Whoa, that's, that kind of blows my mind away. Why? Because, for example, let's say you own a piece of real estate, you, you earn money from rental property. You have ownership in a business called business partnerships. You get, you get uh, uh, sh you're sharing the profits and the revenue stream of that business. Peer-to-peer -peer lending, you put your money here, people borrow it at four, five, six, ten percent. You, you lend them money and they pay you interest. Retirement income is considered passive income, right? 401k income, pension income, social security. This is called unlimited income because you never know how much this can grow. Because like that movie says, money never sleeps if you got money working for you. So lots of times people try to get over here to go over here. They take some of their, uh, their income to come over here. Or they come over to the third one, which is in this category, which is called portfolio income. Now you got stocks, bonds, you get income from dividends, interest, capital gains, royalties. Okay, I will tell you this. Rich people become rich because they make their money right here. If you take a look at Mitt Romney's tax forms, I was studying Mitt Romney when he was uh, going up against uh, Obama. I, I remember going, I'm just studying the rules of the money game. I was just studying IRS. I was looking at the IRS tax forms. You know what I realized? Mitt Romney, a politician, but he cut his teeth in, 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 in equity, in, in, in the stock market, on Wall Street. He makes his money right here. He makes very little money right here in salary. You know why? Because this category that gets, gets taxed the most. This category here gets taxed the least. Listen, Patrick Bidet was sharing me a letter he got from uh, Goldman Sachs last week about Biden's, about Biden's tax plan. He said that Biden wants, you know, Biden and his Democratic Party, they want to increase capital gains, which affects a lot of the income that you make here, instead of being taxed at maximum 20%. Right? What's over here? You can be taxed at 35 plus, right? You can, uh, if you're in California, you're looking at increasing tax from 13% to 16%. Here in the state of Illinois, they're looking to increase tax from a 5% flat tax to a progressive income tax. They're looking to tax you heavily right here. Why? Because they realize 90% of people are right here. 
Rich people are over here. People that make money are over here. Because why? They understand the rules of the money game. See, this is part of my education process with me not having a college degree. I don't have a master's. I don't have a PhD. But this is just what Patrick McDavid in his book, Your Next Five Moves, calls common sense, which can be learned. So when you look at here, they're looking at the Biden tax plan, the Democrats. They're looking to increase the capital gains tax to 20% to 39%. They're looking to double this. So in other words, what's my incentive if I'm an investor to, to, to take my money and look at more stocks, bonds, dividends, interest, capital gains, more royalties, more business investment? Why would it put it here? There is none because they're looking to tax it here just like regular income. So when, whenever, whenever I look at tax laws, I look at tax laws as a compensation plan. I look at tax laws and as an indication of what the government wants me to do to be more fruitful, to create more jobs, to circulate money, and in return, they give me favorable, favorable tax consequences. Good tax, good tax consequences. For example, last year, we made more money than the year before, but our tax bill was significantly less than the year before. Wait a minute. So in other words, one year we made more money, but our tax bill was less than the year we made less money. Why? Because it is. Understanding the Trump tax cuts help me out. Sure, a lot of people don't like the guy. I individually don't like the guy. But the tax laws, the Republican tax laws, has helped me understand what I should be doing with my money. That's a big reason why my business throughout this pandemic has exponentially grown. Did I just say the word exponentially? Yes, exponentially. You know why? Because I invested time to learn a business strategy, how to go in the next column, which is called not just earn income, active passive portfolio income. I learned how to create another form of income called compounding income, okay? It's compounding income. So in other words, I got my business and my money compounding as time goes on, as I invest into myself, as I invest into other people, as I develop leadership within some of my organization, as I develop people that understand the rules of the money game, they work for my firm, they work with my firm, all this stuff starts to happen. Then I have very interesting conversation what to do with the money that's left over. Because my, my job, is my, my, my home, we keep our expenses low. And we keep our profit and our margins high. Why? Because we want to tuck money away here because we want to make sure we can constantly reinvest back into businesses or create jobs. Now this next area is I had to choose, because there's two different types of people in my opinion. You're either a saver, right? I'm just going to save money, save money, save money, or I want to be an investor. Again, one is more active and one is more passive. Guess which one? More passive is savers. Because I make my money, I save my money, I hope it grows. It's going to take me time and generations for that money to grow and compound. I'm passive about it. I'm trusting somebody else with my savings and investments. And I have hope. I have no predictability. I just have hope. And I hope it'll be there. In a time when I need my money the most, I hope. Hope it's there. See, that's a saver, okay? And listen, uh, our family's only been here in America for one generation. I'm a first generation born Filipino here in America. My parents came here from the Philippines. In my entire working life, I've seen savers. I've, I've seen people go to school. I've seen people go get a job. I've seen people get, get, get degrees. But guess what I've never seen a lot of savers do? Retire sooner than later. And when I'm looking at it, investors, okay, they take a little bit more risk in the beginning. They may not get ahead in the short term as savers do. But guess what they do? They save, they tuck money away and develop a cushion, and they reinvest that money. They reinvest the money that they earned right back into themselves so they can expand their, expand their knowledge, their thought process. And here's the thing. What I realize a lot of investors do, they invest in seasons, not generations. What do I mean by seasons? Three months here. I'm looking for a quarterly, a quarterly report. I'm holding, I'm holding myself accountable to my success. I'm holding myself accountable to my work and my efforts. I work through seasons. I sow and then I reap and then I harvest and then I re-sow again. That's the process. They're active and they're involved. They're, they're seeking and guiding, expanding their wisdom. They're seeking, guiding, expanding people who have been there, done that. They walk into a room knowing a lot, but also at the same time walk into a room looking to learn. They go into a room knowing a lot, but also go into the room emptying their cup. See, that's an investor. 
One, one, one operates with humility, the other one operates with ego. Oh, I got, I got this MR 401k, da, 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 da. oh, I got this real estate portfolio, da, da, da. I got all this gold. Listen, awesome. One says, man, you know what? I got all this savings and real estate and portfolio and gold and da, da, da. What am I missing? What else can I do to improve? How else can I get ahead? And the reason why I'm sharing all this is because, listen, somebody asked me, what I, you just heard, what can I do with 5,000 bucks? Not much. It's not much at all. Now, put another, put another two zeros there and move the comma over two slots, $500,000. Now, that's a different story. So your job is to get over here. But based on what you're currently doing right now, how do we get to $500,000 in savings? How do we get to $500,000 in capital without borrowing it so I can actually really, really invest it? $5,000 $5, is just enough for you to get through a couple months of emergencies at most, not to reinvest. If there's anything you're going to invest in, you invest in you to increase your thoughts, your knowledge, how you think and see and process the world. So therefore you can create more wealth for you and your family to create more income insurance protection, which you cannot buy a life insurance company, insurance company, but you build it through you. Okay, so what am I talking about? Let's break this down some more. Let me unpack that. When we're talking about how you take the capital that you have, you might in this case 5,000 bucks, and buying what we call income insurance, which is again, not offered by an insurance company, but the skills that you build, the knowledge that you build, the wisdom that you build to start making sure you control your income is really selling one of three things. Number one, a product, whether it's online, offline, whether you acquire business, for example, this guy. Buying merchandise on Amazon or buying merchandise bulk and selling it online and see if I make money, but I'm kind of trying to, you know, study what's popular, what sells, and what doesn't sell online. So, by the way, I've made my money by selling what's not popular. Because then, when you're in popular, selling what's ever popular, you're in major competition. The idea there is to find something that not everybody's looking at. You want to find yourself, there's a book written out there called The Blue Ocean Strategy. Because popular is red ocean. Blood in the water, sharks in the water, everybody's getting a piece. Everybody's fighting for a piece. Everybody's killing for a piece. Blue ocean, calm. Nobody out there. So consider that when you're selling a product. Sell something, find something that is not necessarily popular. Not everybody's thinking about. Second part is skills. You know, I've invested a lot of, of, a lot of my own money into acquiring skills, skills I didn't have. See, I had a choice. I, I could either go to college, and some of you guys are thinking, like, should I go back to school, master's, etc.? My situation was, let me invest in the skills. Let me find out what other people are doing. Let me find ways I can give them value so therefore I can earn some of their time. So for example, skills. There's a lot of things that I've invested in terms of finding what people are able to mentor me through and train me through and coach me through. Find out what their mistakes have been. And oftentimes a lot of these coaches and consultants put stuff, for example, my mentor, Patrick Ben David, who I've worked with day in, day out, week in, week out, month in, month out through his company, PHV Agency, I've been able to see him put together a package of, of his wisdom and guys of how he's helped me build a business that's built us $5.3 million in income over the last five and a half years. But I've seen people from all over the world come to his train called The Vault. And that's acquiring skills, okay? The third area, and by the way, once you acquire skills and you implement that, and you create results for yourself, and you create for somebody else, you create for somebody else. Now you have a marketable or maybe a highly paid skill set to train, mentor, coach other people to get profit, to avoid mistakes, and to therefore they can make money. The third area is finding something where you are volume based, not just initial product, but something where you're selling a lot of, where there's a lot of margin or spread. Every time you sell this widget, every time you sell this pen, every time you sell something, there's volume. But here's the downside too. The way you sell a lot of that, a lot of areas, is because you put a lot of ads in the paper. Facebook ads, social media ads, etc. I remember when I was in the insurance business, I put a lot of ads in a newspaper so people come to my seminar and throw a volume of people that came to my seminar, two or three become customers because I went through a volume, major, major uh, marketing campaigns to get people in. I made margin spread on commissions. I made selling financial products and services. So how do you determine then what's fake and what's real? If you're out there looking for coaches, say, you know what? I, I, I buy into this. How do I find something where I can create some income whether I sell a product or I sell a product or a service? And who's going to help me? Well, here's something that I want you to make sure you're careful of, especially online. If you say, Matt, I got 5,000 bucks and I want to double my money. 
and I don't want to be passive, I want to be active, here's how you can separate, here's some five checklists, I have five markers to determine the fake versus real gurus that's out there. Number one, ask a guru, ask a mentor, ask a coach, ask a consultant, hey, how do you make money? How do you make money? Do you make money actually selling what you're doing or do you actually make money doing what you're doing? Lots of times I, I see a lot of people say, man, I'm a, I'm a social media agency, I'm gonna help you do Facebook ads, help social media, it's awesome. So do you, do you make money by teaching other people to do it or do you actually do it for yourself? If you actually do it for yourself, show me some results. Show me how, how you've done it for other people. I remember one time a guy sat in my chair right here, says, yeah, I will charge you $5,000 a month for advertising. Oh, I said, awesome, okay, no problem. How many clients, clients how many customers, how, 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 it, how has this become a proof of concept for me? Show me how to do it. Well, you know, well, you haven't done it before? Well, you know, so you not have done it before. Well, you know, so well, I'd be your first? Yeah, you'd be your first. Well, how the hell are you charging me 5,000 bucks a month to do something? You're looking to experiment through me. That's what you're looking, you're a fake guru. You're a fake consultant. You're a fake coach, okay? But if you find somebody say, listen, I make my money doing this, da, 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 da. And by the way, I think a lot, the best of them, they spend their time in their thing versus taking time to teach other people how to do their thing. Uh, that's just been my experience. But the, the f fake versus real, they know how to make money. Ask them how to make money. Do you sell, the, 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 the thing is, do you make money digging for gold? Or do you make money selling tools to other people so therefore they can go make money digging gold, okay? So you have to figure out, is the person that you're acquiring, the person that you're paying, are they fake or real based on how they make their money? Number two, system, the results. Again, back to my first initial thought. Have you created results for somebody else besides me? And by the way, one of the most frustrating things to, to as well is speed, what type of system you have, because if I'm calling your coach and it takes me a week, or a month, two months for me to talk to a salesperson, for therefore they can teach me and coach me, they can guide me to making money, and your system is slow, that's just an indicator about our relationship. If it takes me forever to get to a salesperson, which should be the quickest phone call that you should make to any company, that's an indication of what type of results you can help me create in my business tools. I don't care how good you are, but if your process or your intro systems to get people to not, not only make me feel co uh, comfortable as a customer, but to get some results so therefore I can make some money, if it takes too long to do that, that's a market, it's a, it's a, it's a red flag for me. Third thing, uh, are you gonna tell me to get ads, leads? Are you gonna sell me courses? Are you gonna sell me other things? I got no problem with that if I'm making money. But if I gotta spend a whole lot of money on ads and a whole lot of money on leads, a whole lot of money on courses first, like thousands of extra dollars? I don't know, man. There's a lot of things you can do today for free. For example, if I'm teaching somebody scripts, referrals, human nature type stuff, without creating a lot of unnecessary coding online, a lot of unnecessary Facebook ads that you are lost in minutia doing anyway, or social media ads and leads, or courses upon courses upon courses, I, I don't know about that. Now, the minimum amounts, like 20 bucks a month for this, and 30 bucks a month for this, spend a couple bucks, 100 bucks here for this course, spend a couple hundred, now that, that's within inside the budget, so therefore you acquire some skills. When somebody says, hey man, you need, you need to spend another 1,500 bucks or 2,000 bucks, especially in this marketplace today, I'm kind of worried about that. Maybe, maybe for, for other people, they have a different com uh, comfort level, but for me, if somebody tells me to spend thousands of dollars extra outside of the initial course, initial way to make money, another red flag for me. Number four, can you give me some referrals of people and customers that you've coached? Can you give me some students of yours that have also made some money too as well? Now listen, within that conversation too as well, I wanna hear from not only the good, which is number five, not only from the bad, but also from the ugly, and here's the thing too as well, especially in this world of people making money and capitalism and free enterprise and entrepreneurship at its full, at its, at its, at its full display. There's a school of people out there that are highly ambitious, but lazy. I call these the most dangerous people, the best recruiters, the best recruiters to small thinking, the best recruiters to self-doubt, the best recruiters to limited identity, the best recruiters to doing no work. They want a multi-million dollar income, they want to be financially free, they want to say, you know, I want to live the lifestyle, but they don't want to do any work. There's a big community out there, and they're the ones that spend all the time online on negative reviews instead of positive results for their own lives, and which is the other side, which is highly ambitious, and they're willing to do the work. That's listening to the good, the bad, the ugly. So discern as you're going through 
research, as you discern, if you're looking at ways to make money, if you're looking to discern at how to double your money, you want to be active with it. You just don't want to be passive in the stock market. You want to be passive with other things. But you want to be active in your income, which is the route I chose. The good, bad, the ugly. I don't, want to, I don't want to listen to people self-doubt. Okay, if people say bad things about other people, character assassination type of stuff, no problem. I understand people rub people the wrong way. Then I got to look at a person. Okay, um, uh, 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 I got to look at the values and principles of this person. Does this person cheat, lie, steal? Okay, no. Oh, person held high standards. Oh, different story. The, the person said you got to execute and do this. The person said you got to do your part. It's one thing to buy a $1,500 course. one thing to buy a $2,000 course. another thing to buy a $500 course. another thing to buy a $5,000 course. But you got to do the work. You can't complain that I bought a $1,000 course. You get, I bought a $2,500 course. I bought a $5,000, whatever it is. And because nobody handed to you an opportunity because you're supposed to go out there and get it, whose fault is that? You, listen, you just can't buy a program. You can't buy a course. You just can't buy an investment into something and hope that it's going to unravel itself for you and land itself on your lap. You got to do the work. Any business that you do, you got to do some work. With that being said, these are some things, the markers, that should help you determine the difference between fake people that, that help you out versus real people that help you out, especially when it comes to, hey, I got some money from this. I want to find ways to double my money. In my experience, it's never been somebody else. In my experience, it's always been myself. With that being said, I want to know what you're thinking. I want to know what you're processing. I want to know your thoughts. I want to know your feedback. I want to know how you're looking to double your money. Somebody gave you a miraculous 5,000 bucks, let's, let's say it's me. I give you 5,000 bucks, how would you help me double my money? How would you help me secure more income? Because listen, at the end of the day, people don't have an investment issue. People have an income issue because they're being laid off, you know, companies are, are shutting down, industry is contracting. People have that issue more primarily than an investment issue. If you can solidify and secure the way you make money, investing and saving it is no big deal. By the way, watch this video here, how I turned a $500 investment and became a multi-million. Check this out. The other video here too as well, you might want to check out too as well, is other industries that could potentially make you a million dollars, especially in this current environment today. So check out these two videos. That being said, guys, love to know your thoughts. Drop them in the comment section below. If you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like our business page as you follow the Money Smart Guy in the Seven Figure Squad. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you hit subscribe, hit notification, be alerted the next time we upload our next video so you don't miss another episode of the Seven Figure Squad. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Again, drop your thoughts below. I love feedback, interaction, and until we meet again, continue to live smart. Continue love smart and be money smart today.